to people that say they had trouble with the ending since it's a brilliant film. Well, anybody see The Messenger? Yes. I love The Messenger. I love Steve Buscemi. He, he and I worked on a film years ago together. Uh, it was called Ed and His Dead Mother. Anybody ever see Ed and His Dead Mother? Well, you people aren't film. You, you, you're not into film, you know? <laughs> anyway, Ed and His Dead Mother, check it out. <laughs> I, played it, I, I played his uncle. And part of my job was catching the cockroaches uh, that would help keep his mother alive after she had passed on. It gets better. <laughs> Stick with me. No, it was. It, we had a wonderful time. I love Steve. I loved his family. I. He's. The first. It, well, the first time I met him is like he was known as a performance artist. Remember when we used to have a perform, more performing artist in, in like around New York, and the, you know, I, maybe it's still that way. I haven't been here for a long time, but it, it, he was. Anyway, I'm glad to see he's doing he's doing so well and doing such wonderful work. But he was going to be in Rampart. That's one of the reasons I knew that I wanted to be in it because I hadn't worked with him since Ed and his dead mother. Uh, the Messenger was a very interesting film. It was about the guys that go to the door and knock on the door, and when the person comes, they tell them that their son or their daughter or their brother or their husband, or their wife, has been killed in the line of duty. And they're on, they're on behalf of the Secretary of the Army. It's kind of a shocking thing to watch them do. The second door that they knocked on, Steve Bashimi was at the door, came to the door. They told him that his son had been killed. And he sort of, they asked him if he, he understood what they had told him, and he kind of nodded his head. And they walk away. They get about five steps away, and this voice booms out of this small man saying words I can't use here today about what kind of people are you? You come to my, and you knock on my door, and you tell me this? It was a wonderful scene. And uh, the, the premise of the movie was an exciting movie, but what happens at the end of the movie, the one guy who sort of makes it through the business, he gets a new partner at one point, and then the new partner drops off because he can't do it anymore. And so he's the one who kind of left over, and... He goes through this downfall. What did you think of Rampart, and what did you think of the ending? Since some people were troubled with the ending, I thought I thought well, the film was brilliant. The, the, I think the the problem with Rampart, we had a big, long, wonderful script. When I read <laughs> it, I called the director and I said, "I'm I'm sorry. I I think it's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful script. The only thing I'm related to is is Lear, uh, Shakespeare's King Lear." And he said, "Oh, really?" And I said, yeah, really. I said, I said, you know, the, I'm reading the character that I played, and I felt like I was reading The Fool again. The Fool is the only thing I've ever played in King Lear. I said, it's just, you know, it's a magnificent thing to see somebody try to pull somebody back from the edge and doing it the, the only way they know how or the only, the only, you know, the only language they have to use or the only kind of what sort of, behavior they can use to pull somebody they love dearly back from the edge because they know they're going down. And he said, yeah. He said, yeah. So when we go to make the movie, <laughs> turns out what he wants to do is make the first movie over again. All he wants to see is the guy get in trouble and more trouble and more trouble. And then he wants to do a scene where I almost kill the guy because I get so worn out with him being, excuse me the expression, an ass. And then he just takes him down. It, it, literally, he, he uses shots that, that, that makes you think he's going down the drain. 
Now, we're talking about a man who is a brilliant man. He's an Israeli. He was a paratrooper in the Israeli army. He's one of the guys that went into Lebanon and did the job. So as far as I know, everything I can figure out about, about knowing him and knowing what he's done in his life, he's a hero. He's a warrior. And yet he makes the choice. He, he, he spent time at a kibbutz. I mean, the whole nine yards, you know what I'm saying? He's an Israeli. Which I was very taken with because I worked in Israel once and I was blown away by the whole experience. I just thought it was wonderful. Anyway, there's something in him which has to tell that story again and again and again and again. And we even talked about it one time. I said, I said, are you doing what I think you're doing? <laughs> And he said, we're all doing it. And I was like, what? I come, I come to work every day and you give me new pages when I, I'm in my 70s, you idiot. <laughs> I get new pages when I come to work in the morning at seven o'clock, I get new pages. You expect me to function that way? He finally, he finally, he's a, I love him. I, he's a brilliant man. He looks at me, he says, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? He said, you know, you get your lawyers, we get our lawyers. I said, I don't get lawyers. I said, I'll tell you what it is and what I think it is. And that's just what's going on here now. He said, well, let's finish it up. Let's finish it up. I said, okay. But no free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I love the man. I, I, I but I don't know why he wants to tell that same story again. I don't quite get it.